Uh, two of the candidates in this fall's gubernatorial election, Professor Zephyr Teachout, Governor Cuomo's chief opponent in Tuesday's primary, and Westchester County Executive Rob Astorino. He is the Republican nominee in the November election, and I'm joined by John Lentz, Albany Bureau Chief uh, of City and State, and Professor Christina Greer from Fordham University. Uh, Voters have determined that the number one issue in the state is jobs and the economy. You had a question before the break. Right. So before the break, we, we know that corruption is rampant in Albany. But in one minute, can you all give <laughs> us a very succinct strategy uh, for jobs in the state of New York? Well, we are dead last in economic recovery, uh, job creation. It's bad. Um, I launched my campaign in the Bronx. The Bronx has an unemployment rate of 13%. New York City is 8%, well above the state average, which is lagging behind the national average, because the policies coming out of Governor Cuomo's office are against business, against the job creators. Taxes are so high. Any small business person, whether it's a new immigrant or whether it's someone that's been here forever, it doesn't matter. They want a job. They want a good job. They want to be able to succeed. This state, under these policies from this governor, is making it impossible with the regulations and the taxes. And then to make it worse, highest taxes, and then they nickel and dime you to death until you actually leave the state. Okay. John? Well, oh, it, oh, it, oh, yeah. You want to you pick up on that, Professor? Yeah, no. I mean, wherever I go in this state, people are talking about the need for jobs and good jobs. And my vision for the state of New York is a small business economy with family farms, uh, small companies, and, and what we need to do to get there is really support that kind of economy. In particular, I want to focus on renewable energy and the jobs that come along with really investing in renewable energy. So we have an opportunity to do offshore wind, upstate solar farms, really incentivize small business growth and renewable energy growth. I also support uh, really developing our sustainable agriculture and our high-tech economy. Since, since Governor Cuomo took office, unemployment in the state has dropped from 8.2 to 6.8 percent. He has helped, his tax uh, program has helped to create 380,000 new jobs. He's had four on-time budgets, yet you both criticize him. How do you reconcile that? No, I mean, let's be very clear. Um, Andrew Cuomo's job creation policy is a Reaganite policy. It's trickle-down economics. I actually think it's a lot closer uh, to Rob Astorino's, and maybe he should be debating Rob Astorino in a Republican primary debate uh, instead of not debating me in this Democratic primary debate. But when you look at the numbers, we actually see $1.6 billion a year spent on tax credits. I mean, he's, his economic policy is tax giveaways, and that is accounted for in a recent study less than 1% of the jobs that came through between 2009 and 2013. And they're all concentrated for the most part right here on this island in Manhattan. But you go to the outer boroughs where I've spent time, you go upstate, people are suffering. People cannot find the good jobs because they're not being created. He's got this crony capitalism thing called Startup New York, which is $200 million in tax dollars to promote a fairy tale that things are great in New York. Well, go where I've gone, all over New York. Things are not good. People want to be able to live here, but they're leaving in record numbers because the jobs are not coming back. They might in lower Manhattan, perhaps, in private equity, but they're not on Main Street. John. I have one follow-up question for each of you. Uh, there's one thing the governor has done that each of you might like. He's passed a 2% property tax cap that was supported by Republicans. He's also invested a lot in solar energy. This year, committed $1 billion to support private investment in the state's solar industry. I think that's consistent with what you were calling for. If you could uh, comment on the governor's record on those issues. First, you. Well, we passed a tax credit in Westchester that I did for tax, uh, tax credit for solar. Uh, I believe in renewables. There's no question about it. It's got to be part of our mix. but. We also, and this is where we do disagree the most, if we want jobs in this state, especially upstate, then uh, natural gas exploration is an opportunity. And it's a big opportunity. And 30 other states are doing it, supported by most Democrats, by the way, including Senator Schumer and Gillibrand and the President and the EPA. That's an opportunity for upstate. That won't affect New York City or the outer boroughs or Long Island. And the property tax cap? Property tax cap I support, but that's only part of the equation. We have the highest taxes in America. We cannot continuously raise taxes. It's what's driving the middle class and the working poor out of New York. But we've got to relieve the local municipalities and schools that are getting crushed from mandates from Albany 
and there's no end in sight to those. And the governor's investment in solar? No, I think solar is the right direction, but we could really be a leader in this state. And in order to be a leader, we need to first ban hydrofracking. It's an area where we disagree and where Andrew Cuomo hasn't answered questions for years on where he stands on hydrofracking. I've actually been to Pennsylvania where they uh, fell prey to the promise of hydrofracking. And I've talked to a grandmother whose one-year-old granddaughter was throwing up every morning because of the methane in her water. The science is in, the experiences are in. This is a really toxic practice. And actually, I think Andrew Cuomo not answering on hydrofracking is slowing job growth in the state because people can't move forward. They don't know if they can invest in their farm because they don't know if we're gonna, about to start hydrofracking. I'm going to shift gears just a little bit, and we're going to talk about gun control. Um, so the governor has passed the SAFE Act, which is one of the strictest gun laws, um, gun control laws in the nation. Mr. Estorino, you've been somewhat critical of that. Yeah. Um, and you've even sort of come out and said that you support the possibility of gun groups actually allowing guns, um, gun lessons in schools. So I wanted both of you to expand your thoughts on First gun control all, or lack thereof. The question with the guns in schools was an upstate community, a rural community that had this program for a long time, and the question is, if the school supported it, which they had in the past, and parents supported it, would I be opposed to it? My question, my answer was no. What we did in Westchester, and the SAFE Act, by the way, will not make any of us safer. It's a cosmetic thing that was meant in the worst way passed, with no public debate, no committee hearings whatsoever, and ran to the legislature. What we did in Westchester was thoughtful. We talked about the mental health aspect of this. We actually got the nonprofits, the mental health community. We, we are going after chronic absenteeism and tackling the issues like the loopholes in the mental health system, not to stigmatize, but to get people help. And that's been ongoing and thoughtful, working also with our schools and our police departments to make the schools safer. That's how we did it. Andrew Cuomo went out to get a headline, and that's it. I, you know, I largely support uh, the SAFE Act, um, but, but I do have to say that um, I, it was passed in a way that was disrespectful to a lot of New Yorkers because there were no hearings held. Um, there was no chance for gun owners to weigh in and give their own thoughts. And there are some provisions of it where there's a question about the constitutionality and a question about whether it violates privacy. So I think it's essential that we pass it, but I certainly wouldn't pass it in the same way because I think one of the jobs of leadership is listening and Mr. learning. Mr. Astorino, is it correct, am I correct, were you quoted as saying that you would repeal the SAFE Act yes. if you were elected governor? Yes, I would, because I would focus on not making law-abiding gun owners into criminals overnight, which is what the SAFE Act did. And my running mate, Sheriff Chris Moss, outspoken critic, and law enforcement has said it will not make anyone safer. I would focus on the mental health aspect of this and, and actually do something which we're doing in Westchester. Okay, time flies by so quickly. <laughs> we're going to take another break. We'll come back. We'll have a lightning round and try and touch upon a number of other issues. Sure. So stay with us as our special on Campaign 2014 continues.